Welcome to Sabor Labs, I'm Jamie Goodyear. I've been playing around with comfy UIs of late to do stable diffusion, that is text to image generation. Comfy UI gives you a great desktop experience, however, expects for Windows users for you to have a NVIDIA GPU or to be a MacBook. Unfortunately, I have a MS Surface, which is neither of those. But what I do have is a M4 Mac Mini. Can we use it as a Comfy UI server, as a self-hosted solution, and is it worth it to do this? Let's find out next. Before we begin our testing, I want to show you how we set up Comfy UI. On our Mac Mini, we went and downloaded the installer for Apple, ran the regular installation, so that's just dragging the application over to the application folder. Once we start up Comfy UI, what you're going to want to do is go down to the settings prompt in the bottom left corner, and we're going to go into the server config. Inside of here on server config, what we have set up is the ability for it to listen on port 8000. So if on yours it says 127.0.0.1, you're going to want to put in 0000. 0, 0, 0 and we leave it on port 8000. That's all you need to do. Once you have made those setting change, it's gonna restart the service and then you'll be able to connect into this from a remote machine. So let's take a look what that looks like. After restarting the service, we can now go in our browser and enter in the IP address of our Mac mini. In my case, it's 192.168.50.29 on port 8000. When we load this one in, we now will see the Comfy UI, very similar to what we see as the desktop application. Now, before we start getting into our testing, I want to work through what our workflow is gonna be. We have taken the introductory template that would take the uh, image of a, uh, of a jar with a galaxy inside of it, and it would make this beautiful image for you. We have updated this one, and we are gonna set it up to be a jolly orange cat in a kitchen awaiting its food bowl to be refilled. Yes, Mr. Dodge, my cat. This is what I do with him all the time and I'm always seeing him want to have more food. For our testing, we are gonna have a collection of different models. They are called checkpoints and we will take all of our information and at the end of this full video, we're gonna do a conclusion showing you how all of these turned out uh, after each of our test runs. Looking into the workflow from the model, we will go to our prompt. There is a positive and negative. On the positive prompt, we have our description of what we want it to draw. On the negative, it's some things that you want to take away from the, uh, the generated image. All this goes into the K sampler, which also takes in a latent image. This is where we define the size of the image. It's going to be 512 by 512. We're going to keep it at this small resolution, so that way you get relatively quick iterations. Uh, if we go up to something more standard, let's say like uh, 1920 by 1080, uh, it's going to take a very long time for this to produce. Uh, when we get to our conclusion, we'll talk a little bit more about how performant this is if we get into larger uh, images that we want to generate. In a case sampler, we also can set up a randomizer seed. Uh, this is how it tells the system to make a different image. If you set this to a fixed value for each one of the images you generate, what will end up happening is that it will cache it and just give you back the same image again and again. We want to have something a little bit different uh, so that way we can see how on average uh, any given model uh, gets processed. We are going to use the standard FA decoder. Uh, this is where it's taking everything in, it, in the image space and uh, generating anything out to make your high quality image at the end. Uh, there are different VE you can use, but we're, we're going to just keep it all standardized here and just uh, vary our checkpoints. With that being said, let's jump into testing. For all these tests, I'm going to be showing you my desktop. Before we do these tests though, I want to show you the terminals on the bottom. Right above me, you can see BTOP. This is showing us the CPU core load and memory, network, disk usage, etc. On the right hand side, we see MVTOP. That is showing us the GPU load and memory pressure. Keeping in mind there's 16 gigabytes of unified memory, so we'll be able to see when uh, models are being loaded in and then as they exit out, uh, it's going to be kind of interesting. So let's take a look back now to our desktop. Let's start doing our tests. So to start this, we are going to pick out the 1.5 pruned EMA only floating point 16 model. We are going to do a test run just to warm up the system. And then we're going to run it an extra few times. Uh, we have set this to be a randomized seed. So that way, when we run multiple images, we're going to get different images each time. 
Uh, if we set that value to one as a fixed value, uh, the system caches it and you're just gonna get back a zero uh, response time. We wanna really see how fast this runs on average. Okay, we can take a look in the uh, drop down terminal menu and it's gonna show us how long it took this prompt to execute. In our case, just shy of 19 seconds. It also shows us that it took uh, about 1.28 iterations per second. Uh, what that means is that how many of these nodes in the pipeline it's processing. When things are going quickly, it's in iterations per second. When things are very slow, uh, you're going to see this as being how many seconds per iteration. Easy way to show this one is if we were to increase the resolution from 512 by 512 to say uh, 1920 by 1080, it's going to take quite some time for the uh, generation to occur at that level of uh, resolution. So let's increase our batch count to four, and then we'll take all of this and we'll get an average, and then we're gonna do this iteration again for each one of our models. So let's move through these. Okay, with this job complete, we are going to go to the unload models button up here in the top right corner. Uh, we wanna free this model memory so that when we run the next set of our tests, we don't want to have to include into it uh, the changeover. So let's try out Segmine Vega. And we're gonna start this with a warm up run of a, a batch job of one, just to start it off. And we see this one uh, already, we have quite a few iterations per second. So this is moving through the pipeline quite quickly. Okay, let's set up the batch count to four. We can notice down here that the memory usage is quite low in comparison to some of the other models. This will be something we key when we're seeing how fast this stuff processes. Okay, let's try out the STXL base 1.0 and set this back down to one to warm up the model. We can already note that this is a larger model than the last one. So uh, we can kind of expect this is gonna take a little longer for it to execute. Let's increase our count to four. Okay, it's kind of neat how this model decides to give us more animated cartoony cats. Let's move on to SDXL Turbo 1.0 floating point 16. There we go. And we're going to give it a warm up run. Okay, let's set up our batch of four. All right, let's set up the SDXL Turbo 1.0. Update, it should be in there, good. And let's go for our warm-up run. And let's do the batch of four. Okay, let's go on to our next model, the 1.5 Prune EMA only checkpoint. Okay, and let's go to our last model, the uh, AOM 3A1. Okay, now that we've got some results, let's go graph these out. Okay, so we've graphed out all of our results. Uh, we've done it as the prompt processing time in seconds, followed by iterations per second. We can see that there's effectively three groups here. There is the stable diffusion 1.0 with its variations on floating point, uh, pruned additions, uh, just a standard release. We have our SDXLs and their various iterations are all very similar in their performance runtime. The one I would call out for speed would be the uh, Segmine Vega. That one was certainly much faster. That was a uh, distilled version that uh, claims to offer quite a speed up. And in our little tests, we have seen that happen. Uh, each one of these models, of course, when you're supplying your prompts and all the rest of our uh, variations we can do with uh, controls, 
uh, are going to produce different qualities of images and of course different prompts and different negatives that you provide to it uh, and everything else that we can adjust into this is going to provide you with a different image quality. So I'm not going to uh, judge these based on the quality of what it produced because that's going to be in the eye of the beholder and the particular result that you are looking to get. I.e. if you want things to look more like uh, photorealistic uh, photos. Uh, you might want to choose one mall versus another, which might be more uh, apt to making cartoony kind of characters. Uh, that being said, is the Mac Mini a good platform for running Comfy UI as a server setting on-prem in your own uh, laboratory, your own uh, network? Uh, from my point of view, I think it's a great little system for just getting into using Comfy UI, especially if you do not have the uh, required hardware on your existing laptop. Uh, great way to be able to access this at lower resolutions. If we were to increase our resolution size, it's going to take longer for each one of these pipelines to execute. Uh, and if the amount of time that this takes processing for you is important, you may want to have some uh, higher end hardware to run this. I digress though. Is it a good way for you to be able to learn about it? I think it is. Uh, at these lower resolutions, it's relatively speedy. You can uh, do quick iterations, changing variables, changing your prompts, uh, loading in different uh, nodes. Uh, so those are the nodes of Comfy UI. You can start experimenting and learning how all of this works. So if that is your uh, objective, then yeah, this is a great little system that you can set up and start running and have a lot of fun. I certainly have. That being said, uh, we have reached that time now uh, to say thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, please hit the notification bell so you'll be alert about our latest videos and have a great day. Cheers.